pushing the movement, man. Sweating G's and straight up, like, supporting this independent music, independent clothing, that's all the same, man. man. Pushing this shit to the tip top. Before g -Eazy would clock in 5.1 million Instagram followers, 1 million YouTube subscribers, and over 3 million Twitter followers at the time of this recording. It's July 11th, that means it's 7-Eleven, and 7 is supposed to be giving away free Slurpees. And we've been trying to get Matt to drive us to a 7-Eleven for so long. Before g Easy would collaborate with Britney Spears, Cardi B, BB Rexa, Big Sean, E-40, ASAP Rocky, and his now girlfriend Halsey. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna let you finish, but... Can we please all sing a happy birthday, everybody in the place? Before g Easy would have two hits break onto the Billboard Hot 100 and pick up an MTV Europe Music Award for Favorite Hip Hop Artist and Favorite Hip Hop Artist at the 2017 People's Choice Awards. Uh, shoot, I just, I don't know, they, you know, I got a little piece of hardware right here. All right. Before g Easy would have everyone singing f with me and get some money. Like on repeat, seriously. It's in my head, it's like hypnotic, and it really makes me want to f with g Easy and get some money. Well, his story is a pretty interesting one. Starting out 11 or 12 years old, well, that was the first time he made some beats, and he would also pen his own lyrics while in class. Then he would get home and pour all his energy into making music. That's a long time to be so dedicated. So I, I'm proud of you. That's awesome. The dude has put in well over a decade into his craft before signing a record deal in 2014. His success comes down to his persistence, his hard work, and a lifelong obsession of making it happen. He told Rolling Stone back in 2014, I've always wanted to be a star, I've always wanted to be an Elvis Presley or a Tupac, I have an addictive personality, and fame is the most addictive drug there is. And with the way he's gearing up for 2018, the dude might have a fame overdose. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCrudden, documenting the life and career of g Easy prior to fame, here for you on Before They Are Famous. Now this is an updated video and it's also sponsored by SeatGeek. Thanks to them, I'm able to bring you guys videos each and every day. Be sure to use SeatGeek when buying tickets for your next g Easy concert. As always, be sure to let me know who you want me to document next. Now let's get into this bio. Gerald Earl Gillum was born on May 24th, 1989 in Oakland, California to parents of Ukrainian ancestry. His father, Edward, a professor of art at California State University located in Fresno. And his mother, Suzanne Olmsted, is an artist and a teacher. He also has a younger brother, James, who is a musician. His father had an affair when Gerald was in the first grade. From there, his parents were divorced and him, his brother, and his mother, they moved to Berkeley, California to live with his grandparents. His mother, she would then work two jobs as a teacher to keep food on the table. Money was so tight that they all had to share one bedroom. They would later relocate to North Oakland after his mother entered into a lesbian relationship with a woman named Melissa Mills. Initially, Gerald resented his mom for this, and due to his desire to stay near his friends, he would commute via bus to Berkeley to go to school. Off the album, when it's dark out, the track Everything Will Be Okay, well, the third verse details his initial confusion over his mom's lesbian relationship, but this was something he would eventually come to understand, accept, and appreciate. He continued to tell the tale of discovering Melissa's dead body following an overdose on prescription drugs. Let's take a listen. On the floor she laid, I shook her, she was blue, her skin was cold, and she wasn't breathing. Scream, Melissa, wake up, couldn't fathom if she was leaving. He later stated, it's a really, really personal story that I never told even my closest friends. He attended Berkeley High School where a group of his peers had a billboard hit titled Vans as the hip hop act known as The Pack. This was back in 2006. Speaking on this, GZ said, watching them go from sitting next to me in class to seeing them on MTV when I was 15 was the most surreal, inspiring thing ever. It made me feel like anything was possible. He began making mixtapes at home with the aid of a $150 microphone and a free internet program at the time, which was known as Reason. He would sell his mixtapes for $5 a pop along Telegraph Avenue. Netting as much as $50 would be a great day, but on a bad day, at least he had his part-time job to fall back on. I grew up like, you know, we didn't we didn't have no money like that, so it was like, you know. And then I just dated girls that had cars. I was like, yo, give me a ride to McDonald's, I'm hungry. He started at Top Dog when he was just 14. He never had a car and would take the bus to and from work every day. He stated, that's the only way we brought money in. If I wanted something, I had to go work for it. 
I would, I would be in there, you know, just flipping the hot dogs, you know, like, like <laughs> and I used to slang my mixtapes. I, I had, man, I, I used to put a stack of mixtapes right next to the tip jar. <laughs> he smoked weed for the first time at the age of 12 or 13 and got drunk with a bunch of college kids for the first time when he was in the eighth grade. That night, he barfed all over the room. He lost his virginity in his teens on a park slide with an older woman who was much more experienced. After school, his mom would allow him to have his boys come over to record music at the house. His little collective of dudes were known as the bad boys. And after taking a look at this haircut photo from his high school days, he certainly looks like one hell of a bad boy. There was obvious some drinking and weed smoking going on during his recording sessions, but his mom allowed it. In fact, she cites her eldest son as now her favorite smoking buddy. My mom is my biggest fan in the world. Okay. She listens to me rap all day long. She just, she just plays my songs nonstop. She goes on YouTube, she goes on my Facebook, all that, man. My mom's the homie. Gerald's mother was a big supporter of his musical pursuits. Growing up, she had introduced him to classics like the Beatles, Bob Dylan, and other contemporary rock musicians like Johnny Cash. JC would later come to inspire g -Eazy style, but we'll get to that a little later. He personally cites Kanye, Tupac, E-40, and Mac Dre as some of his early influences. Of course, on top of this, there was Dr. Dre's Chronic 2001, and that shit was everything. I mean, I grew up on 2001. That's like the most classic album ever created, ever. Gerald initially started rapping under the name Generic, and later Young Gerald. His initial sound was influenced by the rowdy style of hip hop from Northern California, but he would later decide to slow down the pace and adopt more Southern bounce music. By the time he had completed high school, he knew that music was the only career he would ever pursue. After graduating high school, he went to Loyola University in New Orleans because of their strong music industry program. There he studied production, business, and marketing. When he was not in class or studying, well, he spent his time perfecting his craft in his dorm room. music via his MySpace page and put out several mixtapes including The Tipping Point in 2008, Sickest on the Planet, and Quarantine both in 2009. There was Big in 2010 and The Outsider in 2011. He also released a download only LP in 2009, The Epidemic LP. Your boy was hard at work and for good reason. He had come to the conclusion that putting free music on the internet as digital downloads and performing in clubs were essential to building a fan base and achieving career longevity. He did his first tour during the summer break of 2009 and he would travel from town to town via car. He maxed out his credit card on gas and he was crashing on the couches of his university classmates eating little more than rice or whatever else he could get his hands on. That we were nine miles away from him when we left. He was like, nah, it's too far away. We'll just find one on the road. The closest one now is 500 miles away. So we're not going to get our free slushie on 7-Eleven day. And what do you have to say for that? What do you have to say? No. By 2011, g Easy was scraping by as a student, but all his work online and his touring, well, they were starting to bring him some attention. His song Waspy and Candy Girl had gained 400,000 plays on his MySpace page. As his reputation had grown, he was offered spots to open for acts, including Lil Wayne, Snoop Dogg, and Drake. Although he wasn't able to socialize with the headline acts outside of the shows, the affiliation allowed him to make moves to the next level. Around this time, g Easy was flown out to LA and had meetings with RCA. He felt he was about to get signed, but then RCA went cold on him and he was left in LA going, what the hell just happened? He had no deal, he had no flight back home, and he was getting threats from his professors that he was going to flunk out of school. He returned to school reflecting on this experience and decided then to adopt a fresh new look. He would abandon his baggy pants and fitted caps and take inspiration from the artists his mother had first introduced him to. From there, he would dress in all black, much like Johnny Cash. Well, it's uh, it's from down in here, right, That's Jay? right. That's, That's right. That's the name of the game. G graduated from university and celebrated this by dropping another mixtape, The Endless Summer, in August of 2011. As he would appear on stage and roll out music videos and social media posts, now everything he put out represented his brand, his new 60s aesthetic. The following year, he independently released his first full length album, Must Be Nice, which peaked at number 33 on the Billboard R&B Hip Hop Album Chart, and number 3 on the iTunes Hip Hop Chart. He finally signed with RCA in 2014 and made his major label debut with his album, These Things Happen. Guests include label mate ASAP Ferg, the veteran Bay Area rapper E40, 
and fellow Californians HBK Collective. The album peaked at number 3 on the Billboard album chart and was certified gold by the RIAA. G then embarked on his first overseas tour from the Bay to the Universe, which included dates in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. He documented the entire experience via his YouTube channel. His second album for RCA, When It's Dark Out, dropped in November of 2015, with guests including E40, Big Sean, Chris Brown, BB Rexa, and Keisha Cole. The album debuted at number 5 on the Billboard chart and was certified platinum. Its lead single, Me, Myself and I, was a duet with BB Rexa, which reached number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, becoming his first top 10 single. It was around this time that I made the original Before They Were Famous video on g -Eazy. Now, Back in the day, my YouTube channel was a little crusty and half the length of the videos they are today. I would be able to deliver these videos the quality they're at if it weren't for the help I get from my friends over at SeatGeek. Boom! This is the world's largest event ticket search engine. What they do is search all the ticket prices available on the web to find the absolute best seat price. SeatGeek puts out a 1 to 100 score to let you know if you're getting a good deal or a bad one. Green means good, red means bad. Now, because you guys have all been amazing subscribers, truthfully, I got you $20 back when you use the promo code FAMOUS. You can grab tickets for your next GEZ concert or any sporting event, basically anything that sells tickets. There's a link down below. Now, let's get back to our bio. 2016 was a big year for GEZ. He was featured on Make Me with Britney Spears, which was the lead single for her ninth album. During an MTV performance, g Easy would make news headlines for his failed attempt at kissing Britney during their performance. He would eventually find the right leading lady for him to do this with in Halsey. In March of 2017, he released the single Good Life, a collaboration with the singer Kalani that received more than 13 million YouTube views in its first month. And the man's endless work and ambition would continue to bring him to where he is today. As for the rest of the story, well, I'm going to wrap this one up here because, of course, this is before they're famous. My name is Michael Cretton, and we're bringing you new videos each and every day. But you guys got to let me know who you want me to document next in the comments down below. A lot of you guys actually reached out to me on Instagram and Twitter asking for me to do this update. So here I am getting it done. Look forward to seeing who you guys want me to do in the future. I'll see you guys in another video. His father had an affair with Gerald while he was in the first grade. From there, his parents were divorced. Wait, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>